hello everyone before starting i would like to mention that please have a look in the description box below where you will find all the playlist link for different important topics let's start today's question is what is the difference between conjugation and hyperconjugation so first we will see individually what is conjugation and what is hyperconjugation once we know the difference uh, sorry once we know what is these two different processes are then it will easily understand what is the difference between these two processes so conjugation so this term we use in organic chemistry when three or more p orbitals linked together into a larger pi system so there must be three or more than three it should not be less than three and this number of pi orbitals they should be linked together if they are not linked together then larger pi system formation is not possible so it may be uh, you can say it is in the form of p orbitals or you can say that electrons that are present in the p orbitals that is pi electrons that is also shared over three or more than three atoms so here you can see two pictures now the first picture here we have two p orbitals they are adjacent to each other in between two p orbitals there is no sp3 carbon but in the second picture in between two p orbitals there is one sp3 carbon right now in the second case we cannot say here the two p orbitals they are linked together but the condition is they must be linked together if it is not then conjugation is not possible so how we can write that is after conjugation what will be the structure okay you can also uh, draw these arrows in the reverse direction so now there will be negative charge here cc double bond and positive charge here okay now if you are doing the reverse direction that that is like this then what will happen then positive charge here cc double bond and negative charge okay so both are fine so in this case you can see there are total uh two pi bonds present but if you consider the carbon atoms individually all these carbon atoms are sp2 so three or more p orbitals in this case we have total four they are linked together into a larger pi system so now we are we can extend this that is starting from here now we can extend this up to this carbon and we are get, getting a new cc double bond fine but that you cannot do in case of sp3 uh if sp3 carbon is present between two p orbitals because in this case if you really want to do forcefully then you have to break a sigma bond but pi bonds if you compare with sigma bond they are high in energy they are weak so breaking them it is easier compared to sigma bond so that is why in the second case the conjugation is not possible we can also see some more pictures where you can compare that whether conjugation is possible or not so here in this case this is cyclic system same type of structure but now it is cyclic here also conjugation is possible so now there will be positive charge here this is new cc double bond and negative charge here but this type of structure we cannot draw in this case because in between these two p orbitals there are uh, there is methylene group ch2 which is sp3 carbon similarly for the third structure also these two pi orbitals they can take part in conjugation there is no sp3 carbon between them but that is not possible in this structure because of this presence of sp3 carbon okay so all the structures in the left hand side and you can compare with their that is the structures in the right hand side where it is not possible but conjugation is possible in the left hand side structures fine now in all these examples you have seen only cc double bond but when we are saying p orbitals this concept of p orbital it is actually flexible it is not just limited to cc double bond it can also include the following so what we have here 1 2 3 4 5 it may be p orbitals of a pi bond now cc double bond you have already seen but it may be also c double bond o pi bond between carbon and oxygen then an empty p orbit now when i'm saying empty p orbital it may be carbocation that is positive charge over carbon or it may be empty p orbital on boron suppose you have uh, bf3 or bh3 so this type of planar structure is there boron is sp2 hybridized and there is 
MTP orbital which is not taking part in uh, hybridization fine so this type of empty orbital also you can consider then the third point is carb anion that is negative charge present over carbon and number four half filled orbital that means single electron lone electron present example is obviously radical and the last possibility is orbital containing a an orbital containing a lone pair that means suppose you have nitrogen atom oxygen atom or halogen so in all these cases we know there is presence of lone pair just take example of ammonia there is lone pair though uh, i shouldn't give this example because in this case we do not have any pi bond i mean to say there should be nitrogen as well as there will be some double bonds you can consider this type of structure that is cc double bond then in each like this okay so here you can see this lone pair over nitrogen this can take part in uh, conjugation with the cc double bond fine so lone pair over nitrogen oxygen or halogen chlorine fluorine bromine etc so all these five possibilities now you can see the corresponding examples so this is for number one this is number two empty p orbital this is third possibility negative charge carbonyl number four half field orbital radical and number five so for the first uh, picture so here after conjugation cc double bond it is taking part in conjugation with the c double bond o so now it will be this is the newly generated double bond negative charge over oxygen and positive charge here. fine then for the uh, second example you can uh, take part that is you can consider any of these easy double bond left hand side or right hand side it doesn't matter which one you are taking it is symmetrical structure so cc double bond this is newly generated bond and positive charge is shifted here so see all these three carbons that is this cc uh, double bond initially it is restricted in this region but now it is extended to the next carbon also so it is because of not because of two pi bond it is because of this mdp orbital which is the second example then the third example if uh, negative charge over carbon present that is carbonyl so here negative charge newly generated cc double bond and the other part there is no change fine then the fourth possibility we have single electron here so i will use a single headed arrow so now this single electron it will be here this is newly generated cc double bond rest of the part there is no change similarly when you have uh, lone pair over heteroatom nitrogen oxygen then this lone pair also take part in conjugation so now see oxygen is now positively charged because it has donated the lone pair rest of the part there is no change so in this way also uh, you can have conjugation so this is all about conjugation next we have to see what is hyper conjugation now when it is hyper conjugation there is involvement of sigma bond also in the previous case you do not uh, have you have not seen any sigma bond involvement right but now we will see that it is stabilizing interaction of bonding electrons that are present in carbon hydrogen sigma bond with a p orbital of the adjacent carbon atom when i am saying adjacent it means alpha carbon that is the carbon with which the h is attached hydrogen atom is attached with respect to that carbon the next carbon alpha carbon and after breaking of the ch bond the ch bond will be broken and this h will be removed it will remain as h plus it will remain as proton h plus in close proximity fine now as uh, here it is mentioned with a p orbital in the adjacent carbon atom now this may be two types the first possibility is if electron density of ch sigma bond see this is ch sigma bond this is ch3 group this is sigma bond and cc pi bond so if i am drawing the structure here it is like this any groups are attached here that is not important important thing is alpha position so here ch bond this carbon if you consider its alpha uh, that is position with respect to this carbon it is here 
so the adjacent carbon atom that is alpha carbon here we have this pi bond now this ch sigma bond if it is interacting with this pi bond this interaction that is electron density donated to pi bond that is hyperconjugation for example you can see focus on the middle picture which is in box so in this uh, case what we have ch3 then cc double bond fine now with respect to uh, this ch3 group one hydrogen second hydrogen three hydrogen that means three hydrogens we have numbered one two and three all these are basically you can consider any of these but all the possibilities possible structures are given so if you are breaking this bond then look at the right hand side see this h is now in close proximity in the form of h plus and you are getting a cc double bond here and negative charge will be over this carbon that is the right hand side carbon if you are breaking hydrogen number two and the carbon that is if you are breaking let me change the color if you are breaking this bond now look at left hand side this is h plus in close proximity and newly generated cc double bond negative charge over this card similarly if you break the carbon hydrogen 3 then also you are getting same type of structure so all these hydrogens here we have total three alpha hydrogen why i am calling it alpha hydrogen because it is attached to alpha carbon that is it is alpha hydrogen so higher is the uh, number of alpha hydrogen uh, more will be a uh, more number of hyper conjugated structures you will get so in this case three possibilities uh, three structures you can see so in this case we have cc double bond adjacent to some ch sigma bond and the second possibility is electron density donated to carbocation or radical now look at this picture it is actually like this c positive charge that means empty p orbital will be present and two ch bonds now these two may be any other bonds that is not important but with respect to this ch this is sigma bond right carbon hydrogen sigma bond with respect to this carbon this is adjacent carbon now we do not have any cc double bond but we have carbocation or it may be radical also c dot right now when this ch bond is broken it will be like this now it is in close proximity cc double bond and rest of the that is the right hand side part there is no change so you can also break the other two hydrogens that is if i am saying total three hydrogen this is one this is two just like the previous structure as you have seen this is number three so any of the ch bond you can do Break. so this is hyper conjugation so now you can understand the difference in conjugation it is only the pi bonds that we have considered but in hyper conjugation it is a stabilizing interaction of ch sigma bond with a p orbital now this p orbital it may be uh, pi bond that is p orbital or it may be positive charge that is empty p orbital of carbocation or it may be it may contain some single electron okay so this is the difference between hyper conjugation and conjugation so i hope you got the answer of today's question so if you find the helpful please go ahead i will meet you in the next video